If you take all the vertical shoots out of this, most of them, you'll leave a few at the top, it would be just the branches that are going to bear your fruit. Generally you take all branches coming out that go straight up out of the branch. That doesn't go straight up out of the branch. This doesn't go straight up out of the branch, but it doesn't have any fruit on it. But you could pull this down with a weight and make a branch that will give you apples. So the first thing you would prune on this tree this year is anything that's going straight up or straight down out of this. First thing you take out is the 3Ds. If it's a dead branch, you got to remove it. It ain't going to do you any good. If it's diseased, you got to remove it. So the disease, damaged, or dead wood all would have to be removed. This doesn't have a lot of dead wood on it. This tree is pretty healthy. See these old fruiting spurs? By this time, all this has come out. Pretty soon, these little things will be starting. I can already see they're starting to swell. So you're going to have apples on them. That's an old fruiting spur. You could nip that off. You can nip that off. You can nip that off. That's about the only thing major in here to try to uh, get rid of that. Now here is a, a branch that is growing down. It's got fruit on it, so I'll probably leave it this year, but because uh, it's coming out of here, I will, prob I will cut that off because it's going straight up. And by it going up, it will interfere with this branch if you wanted to keep it. But since that union has too many branches, you know you're going to take that one out anyway. So this branch will come out, and that branch will come out, and that branch will come out. We're trying to have the center open so light can get in here. The apples taste a lot better if they have sunlight on them. They are larger, higher quality tasting apples than when they sit in the shade. These two little shoots will need to come off of there because they're just definitely never going to do anything. So we planted the whip, it grew that branch, which grew that branch, which grew all these branches, and it grew that branch, then it grew that branch, and then you can count. There's a little ring of things, the collar that you cut against, you can see all those little rings. But this year it grew only to there. The next year it appeared to grow to there. It's hard to tell on the older wood. And it may have grown all the way to there. You can see the different color. But I tend to think that this grew to here and didn't grow much further because it put out these two side branches. Then this branch grew out of here. And it grew to there. No, it grew to here. And then this branch grew from, when I cut that branch off, this bud opened up and grew this branch out to here. And then I cut it off right there, and instead of having a long one, it's got two short ones. So if you were looking for a foot to 18 inches of growth between the two, you've got that. You would think a thunderstorm was getting ready to roll in here. I started getting this stuff together. It was calm earlier. Right I waited about 30 minutes for the wind to die down. When you plant your whip in the ground and you uh, cut it off where you want your branches to grow, different trees are different things. The general rule is about 30 inches. Uh, some people used to say like at your waist. Uh, well, suppose you're six five. Suppose you're five foot tall. You know, with 30 inches, 36 inches, uh, the different trees take different things. Most of the trees we have uh, are not. We have two full-size apple trees, the rest of them aren't. But when you plant your whip in the ground, let me tell you a little secret. Deer love them. It's like cocaine. And they will just eat them to death. Every, every leaf that comes out of it, every branch that comes out of it, they will eat the whip. You have to put at least three poles in the ground and some strong wire fencing around it. Uh, most people use like that chain link fencing that people use. But you've got to protect it from that deer and a deer can stand up on its hind legs and uh, probably reach you know five feet 
six feet. A deer can jump a fence that's probably seven, eight feet tall with no effort. A four foot fence, they will stand sideways to the fence and just leap over it like it's not even there. But you've got to protect those whips when you put them in the ground. Uh, or they will eat them, plus the rabbits will eat the bark off of them. And you know, you've already got a whip and you've got a second ear and boom. Uh, you, the, the fence needs to be on there as long as you, until you get your branches forming. And then you can put a lower fence around it. But uh, for a full size tree where the branches will come out fairly high, you could keep four foot of chain link fencing around it for a long time. I think everybody who lives around me is running a two stroke motor. One thing you gotta think about for the future, this branch has never been that big all along, right? That trunk hasn't been that big since you put it in the ground. So let's say you're trying to grow a branch right there for the future. That branch eventually will get as big as this branch. You got to think about that. It won't always be small like that. They do keep growing. Otherwise, it would still be a whip there. So when you think about how this is, you go, oh, I'm just fooling this little teeny branch. Well, it used to be. It's going to be that size after a while. I mean, all those grows have grown at different times, and each one of them are different sizes. They keep getting growing. 